What's good, R&B squad? This is Sada Ruth. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If the Lord has recently led you to this channel, welcome. We're happy to have you. And Jesus is, of course, always happier. Happy 1st of October, guys. I have a word for you all, and I hope that I'm not too excited to deliver the word that I mess it up. So pray for me. I pray the Lord helps me as well so that I can deliver this the way he intended for me to deliver it. The word has a few different parts to it, okay? So the Lord has had me... Oh, and by the way, I am outdoors, guys, so if it gets to be a little bit noisy, turn on the closed captioning so that you can get the word. This is an important word. And also, if there's anyone, as you listen to this word, if there's anyone that the Lord places on your heart that needs to get this message please share with them. And even if you don't share the video itself, talk to them about the message and let them know. Because I feel so strongly in my spirit that this is going to bring hope to so many people. Okay? So the Lord has had me in Luke chapter 1. He has had me studying Luke chapter 1 today. All right? And Luke chapter 1 is all about miracles happening. Miracles that look impossible. Well, the fact that it's a miracle itself is what makes it look impossible because then it wouldn't be a miracle if it didn't look impossible. But Luke chapter 1 is all about believing in miracles, believing in God being able to do the impossible, believing that the promises that the Lord spoke over your life are going to come to pass, believing that it is not too late for his promises to come to pass. Look at Elizabeth and Zechariah, for example. So now in Luke chapter 1, you've got Mary. She's this young girl, this young lady. She is engaged to be married. She has never been with a man. She says so herself. I have never been with a man. These two young people are doing this thing God's way. They're not fooling around. She wasn't fooling around with Joseph. They weren't trying to sample anything before the appointed time, they weren't doing any of that. They were doing it by the book, by the holy book, okay? And here come this angel. And the angel is telling her, sis, little sis, you're going to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit, okay? And so that's a tall order for this young lady to be able to accept this because this is going to turn her entire life upside down. First of all, she now has to go and explain to her fiancé that she's pregnant and it's not because she cheated on him. It's because the Holy Spirit impregnated her. This is something that God did. And we all know what happened after she told that to Joseph. He wasn't all on board with it 100%. He was getting ready to put her away. And then, of course, God had to step in and prevent that from happening by speaking to him directly. So this was a lot for this young lady to take on. But you know what? Nevertheless, her cousin Elizabeth said it the best. Blessed is she who believed. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Mary believed. Elizabeth believed. The one person who wasn't believing was Zacharias, and he was silenced until it was time for the promise to come to fruition. So there are going to be some people in your life, if this is for you, I don't want to get too far ahead before I get into that part of the message, but there are going to be some people who are going to be silenced in the interim between now and when your promise comes to pass because they just can't stop talking down on your promise and make sure that person isn't you. Make sure you're not the one speaking all this unbelief. All right. So what the Lord also had me do was look up a little bit about the birth of Jesus. And I was just following his lead because I didn't know where he was going with this. And in my studying of Luke chapter 1, guys, I came up on this really interesting article. And I'm going to put a link to it in the description box so you guys can read it on your own time. But I'm going to read it for you guys. And it was it's called, When Was Jesus Born? And it is from BibleInfo.com. Again, I'm going to put the link to that in the description box. The Bible gives no specific date of Jesus' birth. However, the date can be estimated based on the following. And I'm reading from the article here. 
When Hebrew shepherds historically tended their flocks in open fields, according to the biblical account of Mary and Elizabeth's pregnancies. Now, what month was Jesus born in? As we look at the story of when Jesus was born, we often think of the shepherds in the fields watching over their flocks. What can this evidence tell us about the date of Jesus' birth? Were the flocks in the fields around the time of our modern day Christmas, December 25th? Let's look at what Bible what the Bible says in Luke 2 verses 8 to 9. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock at night. And behold an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. According to the Bible commentator Adam Clark, it was customary for the Jews to send their sheep to pasture from spring until early October. Somebody pay attention to that. Okay, that's important. As the cold winter months began, the flocks would return from the fields for shelter and warmth. Since the shepherds were still tending their flocks in the field around Bethlehem, it can be concluded that the angels announced the news of Jesus' birth no later than October. And I'm going to stop there, but like I said, I'm going to put the link to the full article in the description box so you guys can read it in its entirety. And also, for those of you whom this word is for, and I know it's for so many of you, read Luke chapter 1 in its entirety as well. It is going to lift your spirit. It is going to bring you so much hope. It did that for me, and I pray it does the same for you guys, okay? So what we can gather from this article is that the birth of Jesus had to have happened somewhere between September and October. Reason being, the shepherds did not stay out in the field looking after their sheep any later than that. After October, it was too cold for them to be out in the field looking after their sheep. However, because of the fact that the Lord highlighted Luke chapter 1 to me on the 1st of October, I feel very strongly that that is his way of confirming that his birth, his earthly birth, was actually in the month of October more so than in the month of September. Now, I know not everyone is going to agree with that. I know there are biblical scholars who are not going to agree with that, but I'm just going off of what the Lord placed on my spirit and what he revealed to me in my private time with him. And it's very significant that he highlighted the first book of Luke on the 1st of October, okay? And another thing that made this concrete in my mind is that If you look at the month of October, it has long been attacked by the enemy. This month has been a month that has been stained by the darkness of the enemy. So this is the month where there's Halloween. There's all of this witchcraft going on. There's all of this dark energy circulating. Okay? And people know it for being an ominous month. However, the enemy always tries to attack something beautiful that the Lord created. So if the month of October is significant to the Lord for some reason and has biblical significance for some reason, it is totally understandable why the enemy went so hard for this particular month to make it into this dark thing. Okay? If you're on board with this, make sure you put in the comments, we're taking back our October. October is no longer going to be known to us in the Christian community as the month of darkness, as the month of Halloween. No, sir, no, ma'am. This is the month of birthing miracles. This is the month when miracles, when the impossible is made possible by the hand of Almighty God. A lot of you have you've received words that have been spoken over your life at the beginning of the year. Some of you got words last year in October, last year in November, last year in December that you haven't seen come to fruition yet. This is the month that you're going to start seeing promises being fulfilled, okay? This is the month when you're going to start seeing miracles being birthed. It is not the month of darkness anymore. It's not a month where you have to crawl under a rock and be afraid because the witches are out. This is our month. This is our October. We're taking it back. And the Lord's got some blessings lined up for us in this month. He's got some miracles lined up for us in this month. Okay, praise God. 
The other part of this message, it is going to be for a smaller group of persons, but it can also be for the wider group that I just addressed, okay? And it came from a dream that I had. In the dream, this lady, she was talking to this other woman. Now, I felt the energy between these two women, and I could tell that the first woman did not trust the second one. I could also tell that the reason why she did not trust the second one because was because the second one could not be trusted. She was not trustworthy. I just felt that energy coming from her. Okay? So she starts talking to this woman about her union with her kingdom spouse. So she's talking to the second woman. The first woman, sorry. She's talking to the first woman about the first woman's union with her kingdom spouse. All right? And she tells her, you know, I heard something about the two of you and I heard it's not going so well. And I heard it's in trouble, meaning that the relationship, the union is in trouble. And then she said it's being broadcasted, like people are hearing about it. So your name is in people's mouths, more or less. And then she says, you know, there's a letter. There is a letter and you can see for yourself that your person that your husband, he's agreeing to this. He is in agreement with the fact that you guys, your relationship is in trouble. And the first woman says, where's this letter? Where can I find it? And then it turns out that the letter has been hidden on the floor somewhere in some place that's obscure. Okay. So now when she retrieves the letter, she finds out that it has already been opened so it was already read, and most likely this woman who was passing this information on to her was the one who opened the letter. And I got the impression that this letter had been passed around from hand to hand before it got to its intended receiver, okay? So when she finds it, she finds it on the floor in this obscure place. But when she reads it, this man isn't angry with her at all. This man isn't telling her that it is over at all. He isn't saying that their union is in trouble at all. He's making her an offer. And that was the end of the dream. So for someone, there are some people or there is a person who is intent on causing trouble for you and your God-intended spouse. Now there is a document or a letter of some sort involved that has to get to you. And it is from your kingdom spouse, okay? Now this person or persons, they got hold of this letter somehow. Somebody who was not supposed to be reading that stuff, who weren't, they weren't, it wasn't their business to open that letter. They opened it and they read it and then they have tried to hide it from you. So that's the reason if you haven't received it yet, you haven't received this letter or this document yet. It's because it was hidden by these individuals. They did something to try to mess up you receiving this letter. And let me tell you guys what that can look like. Even if they could not physically retrieve the letter so that they could open it up and read it, they sent out monitoring spirits to figure out what was in the letter. And not just that. They may have interfered spiritually in the spirit realm to prevent that letter from getting to you. Do you understand? To block the communication. Notice she said that she was hearing talk of it. That's another thing. Be careful of whom you take information from. There are people that are going to be coming to you telling you stuff about your kingdom spouse that's not true. They're going to be feeding you false information. But the Lord said everything that is being done in secret is going to be exposed. And you're going to know exactly who these people are and exactly what they did. And you're going to receive this communication. This letter is going to come to you. This document is going to come to you. For some of you, it may not be an actual letter or an actual document. For some of you, it may be a phone call. It may be a message. But this message is going to get to you. And when it gets to you, it is going to be vastly different from what you've been hearing from the false narrative that these people have been pushing. Okay? Again, this could be separate from the original message, or it could be part of the original message. For some of you, this is the month when your kingdom marriage is going to come together. This is the month when you're going to be reunited with the person that you're waiting for. This is the month when reconciliation is going to take place. And there are people working overtime, double time, 
to try to prevent that from happening. But the Lord has already declared it a month of miracles, okay? So it's just a matter of time now. I hope that this message blessed someone. I love you guys. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.